Corinth. Long before it was a shotgun in Warframe, it was a battlefield in the Civil War. And in Ancient Greece, but we really don't care about that one. Before I fade to the part I make my changes, let me show you something that started happening to my units. The 3 star 111 midrange team is full up on several statistics here. What this means is, I can replace some of the losses with rookies, and they will stay my best trained team. Given the cost of veteran replacements in general, and in 3 star units in particular, this is a good way to keep replacement costs down. A good rule of thumb for high skilled brigades is, Anyone you are refilling, go ahead and use rookie troops until the stats that you want to keep high get down to 95. They should get back to 100 during the next fight they take part in. I'm also going to put newly 3 star General Johnston in charge of 1st Corps again, as I want his training bonus back in action. Sir, yes, sir. He gets his 3rd command perk now, so let's talk about those. The 3 choices are an increased radius and morale resistance, increased speed and stamina, or increased cover and morale. Two of these are distinctly defensive, and the center one is more for attack. All three are decent if put to good use, but keep in mind, all third tier command perks only affect anyone within the general's command radius on the field. Taking the offensive perk, then leaving your guy back with the cannons does no one any good. I don't like the attack perk, but that's just me. I tend not to favor offensive maneuvers until I already know I have a decisive advantage, so the benefit doesn't do much. The cover bonus I do on one guy, specifically on Cannon Commander Daniel Hill. Since the only time I put him in charge of a core is when I plan on overloading it with cannons and having a long-lasting artillery exchange, I can just plop him down in the middle of whatever units are taking return fire to minimize their casualties. But mostly, I tend to stick with the morale and radius perk. The fact is, until this point in the game, the only thing being in the command radius did was provide a morale bonus. So taking this perk just doubles down on what was already happening, meaning that I don't need to change any of my tactical usage of the core generals. I'll drop the points into economy, but as usual, hold off on getting anything from the reputation or armory menus, though I will grab the barracks kernels. And then fade out. Alright, compared to the hour and a half remodeling before Antietam, this was a nice relaxing break. Though I did leave everyone in the other cores to be dealt with later. I refilled all units to their pre-Antietam counts, using a combination of veterans and rookies, as per what I said like 5 minutes ago. I've also adjusted my commanders somewhat. Most notably, I've placed a major general in command of the melee and training brigade, who I've also chosen the second part for, going with the melee training, and giving them their palmettos for maximum melee efficiency. They aren't really in training anymore, but I'll rename them later. Also, every single cannon in First Core is now two stars, with the shooting training tier 2 perk taken all around. It won't be too much longer until these units are so well trained that I stop using them in side missions altogether for cost and training reasons, but not just yet. And now, to the battle. Our army is deploying to attack the Yankees north of Corinth. We need to seize this town, a critical junction in northern Mississippi, and disrupt federal lines of communications. You'll lead the attack on the Federals' exposed left flank. Their position at Memphis Road is exposed, leaving a significant gap near their center. If you move swiftly, you can crush them before the Yankees send reinforcements. While these numbers look insanely lopsided, bear in mind I can only bring 15 brigades, and the count here is for all 20. The... Uh, Yankees have deployed their left flank at Memphis Road, leaving a significant gap in their center. Their headquarters are established in this farm. Attack swiftly and crush the federal flank. Now oh, that was a brief intro. This video is shaping up to be a rather short one, which I'm sure most people won't complain about. This map couldn't be more simple. There is a single capture objective, and victory or defeat comes down entirely to if you hold it when time runs out. The battle timer in the top right is accurate, though if the point is in mid-flipping, you can extend it by a few minutes. 
The Union have infantry along fixed defenses here, several oversized cannon batteries here, several floating infantry brigades here, and a lone skirmish team starting about here. There's also a single small cavalry brigade sitting in the back somewhere, but it moves so much that me drawing a location on the screen is counterproductive. Also, there are two vision points here that the Union will be using to make sure you are unable to sneak anyone anywhere. You have your own vision point here, but it's not nearly as useful. Still, I'll have a skirmish detachment at it. The reinforcements mentioned in the stage opening will arrive at 10.50 on the clock from this area, and consist of two moderately sized cavalry and two moderately sized infantry. The intro said if we press hard, we can win before they arrive, but I'd much rather they arrive anyway and into my waiting arms. To counter the Union, I'll be doing the following. Three infantry and the Snipesimers will sit in position to intercept the reinforcements. A scrub team will sit in the center position and a bit forward to take the damage. Two infantry sniper teams will be in these spots, and the Snipesimers will put in painful side shots from below, causing them to retreat into the top right corner. It will certainly not take all four units the entire map to deal with these guys, so as the Union force over here gets pinned and thinned, I'll gradually slide the forces south to lock in the Union from the east side. A scrub team, mid-range team, and mid-range cannon will set up in these woods to make sure the Union don't get any ideas of pushing north, but their roles are largely as deterrent. I'll move them in towards the end of the stage as conditions allow. The main force will be 8 units, 2 mid-range cannons, 2 long-range cannons, 2 scrub teams, one of which was the melee specialists, a sniper infantry, and a mid-range infantry. Their goal is going to be to swing around the side of the defensive walls, taking on all comers from the non-entrenched Union infantry, and eventually pushing towards the objective from the west. The non-melee scrub team is going to take up the point here, and should end up being the damage sponge unit of the map. From my attempts at this stage, I estimate there's a 50-50 chance that he'll get charged by the Western Union Infantry, and a 50-50 chance the Union Infantry will engage your own forces in a prolonged exchange of fire. Be sure you know which it's going to be before sending infantry around the west edge of the map. If this guy is going to get charged, you want to make sure the MIT and mid-range teams are in position to counter melee the assault with the sniper infantry covering the flank, until the charge is broken. Otherwise, you may very well end up with the lone scrub team getting routed and the enemy breaking into your back lines. Regardless of how quickly this side resolves itself, however, your positioning inside cover should allow you to win the day. The four cannons positioned over here should prioritize assisting the scrub team in fighting off chargers, and when no charges are happening, its second task is to focus on firing at any unit, infantry or artillery, that it can catch in the open. As the Union cannons will hopefully be focusing on your forest covered damage sponge scrubs, yours should end up having a much higher overall effect. As far as wiping out the entire enemy force, that really comes down to the first 30 minutes. If the enemy all rush you and get myrtleized in a huge multi-brigade melee with cannon support, then you can make the sweep much earlier and get the entire Union force trapped in this area for elimination. If you instead have an extended firefight over here, then the odds are that the clock won't be long enough to destroy the central units entirely. Which really is fine. Even just wiping out the four reinforcing units and heavily damaging the rest is a perfectly acceptable and wallet-friendly result for this stage. We do have to watch our pocketbooks after Antietam after all. If you're wondering why I left that music in, I was going to mute the song during this sped up deployment phase, but I have to counter copyright claim every single video anyway, and I found it at 300% speed hilarious, so I figured why not.
Huh, I don't really have much to say this video, do I? Alright, have a gratuitous doggo picture instead.
there will come a point where the Union forces fall back enough that your flanking cannons are of little use, even the long-range ones. I should have been moving them up earlier than this, what with the time it takes them to move through trees and all, but really they won't have too much more of an impact this stage. Did I accidentally give my damage sponge team the order to charge? Seven game minutes left on the timer, everyone in. Twenty-two hundred of 17,000 men lost on my side, 8,000 plus casualties out of 16,000 on theirs, and not a single cannoneer or skirmisher on my side got hit at all, which is pretty unusual. Casualty check. Lots of effective damage, no hits to the cannons or snipes of ours.
The majority of my 2200 casualties came from the two scrub groups, with assorted other damage spread across all infantry. Almost exactly as planned. Officers. One promotion, no casualties. Always a plus. Nothing special in the loot page, just a decent standard distribution of goods. Well, three hour video, this was not. Hope you all enjoyed the pseudo vacation from my previous doorstopper of an episode. I'll throw the career point into economy before I leave. That brings me to a full 10 points, which means I no longer have any incentive to put off purchasing officers or weaponry. And that's about it. Just the customary post-stage save and fade to black. See you all next video.